Hello, my name is Rick Burke, and I work on the Ag Injury News team here at the National Farm Medicine Center. Ag Injury News is an online collection of agricultural injury news reports that we then code and collate into a website, which is freely available. And you can search through all of our injury articles by various filters, by location, and we try to make it as easy and simple as possible for people to identify agricultural injuries throughout the US and now into Canada as well. So why is something like Ag Injury News important? Why is surveillance an important tool? Well, frankly, there are a lot of agricultural injuries that happen in the US. This is an example map from Ag Injury News, and you can see all of these dots on the map represent anywhere from one to over a hundred different injuries that occurred in that area. So we want to get as much information on these injuries as we can so that we can better tailor our prevention efforts to stopping these injuries from happening in the future. And unfortunately, agriculture is a very dangerous occupation. When you consider agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting, it is the third most dangerous occupation after construction and transportation and warehousing in pure number of fatal work injuries. However, if you consider the rate by including just how many agricultural workers there are, then the industry jumps above transportation and warehousing and construction and is on a per capita basis, the most dangerous occupation in the US. As of 2017, there are a lot of farmers. There's over 3 million producers in the US with an average age approaching 60 years old. We don't have many new young people entering farming. And so the average age of a farmer is just growing and growing. And so we need to try our best to keep them safe and make sure that they can remain productive while working. There are over 2 million farms in the US which produce almost $400 billion worth of agricultural products spread across 900 million acres in the US. And most of these farms are family farms. There's about 1.8 million small family farms in the US. There's over 100,000 medium-sized and then another 50,000 large family farms. And these are farms that don't have hundreds of employees. It's mostly just the family and maybe another handful of employees. And so they don't have the resources to ensure that they have every single safety precaution followed, but we wanna make sure that we can keep them as safe as possible while also keeping them as productive as possible. And alongside a family farm comes the family, comes children. Agriculture is the only occupation that allows children in the work site and unfortunately, that leads to a good number of agricultural injuries in children. Unfortunately, one every three days or so, a child dies in an agriculture-related incident. And youth working in agriculture have a higher rate of fatal injuries than every other industry combined. And so we here with Ag Injury News want to make sure that we can collect as much information as possible to inform our prevention as best as possible so that we can prevent these in the future and bring that number way, way, way down as close to zero as we can get it. So I'm going to walk through an interactive activity with you today about using Ag Injury News to inform some local community decisions. Uh, let's say in this scenario that your community has seen a spike in agricultural injuries and you've been asked or you've volunteered to get more information to see how this can be prevented in the future and hopefully move everyone into action to do something about this. So I'm going to swap over to aginjurynews.org and this is the website uh, as you see when you first visit. An account is required. Uh, so if you click on the sign up button, you will have an option to create account. It only requires an email address. 
Uh, and then we do ask for a little bit of contact information, but that's kept entirely private. It's never shared. And it's really just useful for us to inform who's using the service and how can we better improve the service for those users. When, you're, when you first visit the website, you can see the, uh, this YouTube video, which will go through what Ag Injury News is and how it could be helpful for you as well as a snippet of the most recent cases published in the database and a snapshot of how many incidents and a little bit more information on what we have currently in the data set. So you can see we have over 3000 incidents input coded, ready to be looked through to find exactly what you need, which encompasses over 4,000 victims and unfortunately over 2000 fatalities. So I'm going to log in so that we can work through this problem uh, of a large upswing in community and injuries. So we'll just log in with our email address. And then once you log in, you're greeted with this web page with this great map at the top that really breaks down where the injuries are located. You can click on these bubbles to zoom in where exactly you want to be. Uh, to really see what's the distribution of injuries. And then you can click on an individual one to get some more information on what happened in that location. Or you can scroll down to the list of all of the incidents uh, where you have the news article title, a summary, and then just a little bit of extra information alongside it. And the left side are the filters. So this is what's really handy in helping you find what you're looking for in Ag Injury News. So with our scenario, we want to look at injuries, we'll say last year, 2020. So we can go to date, incident year. We were more concerned about when they happened, not really when the news reported on it. And then 2020. Let's say that the injuries that we've seen are more child related. And so we want to focus on just youth agricultural injuries. So we scroll down and there's age, and then youth is already an option, or you can use the slider to focus on just a specific age range. Then we'll scroll back up, we'll click on filter, and you can see that the website is updated, the map is now updated, and this shows all of the injuries that occurred to youth in agriculture last year. And so we can scroll down and we're really looking to just get a better idea of what exactly is going on. And so we can read through some of these summaries to get a pretty good idea of what's going on. Um, some news reports can be rather vague, which is understandable. You have a youth injury and you wanna protect both the youth's identity and the family's identity and respect their privacy. However, that information is very helpful from a prevention standpoint. And so if we look at say this incident here, uh, we can see that it was an eight and a 12 year old uh, were non-fatally injured when they were operating an ATV and a dirt bike in a field. And the eight year old operating the ATV struck a rock and collided with the dirt bike. And so if you click on that, we have a link to the actual source if you wanna read through the full original news article. And then as we scroll down, we get a little bit more information on the incident itself we can see that it occurred on an agricultural operation in a field. There were two total victims and it occurred in the afternoon in the state of Vermont. And so as we scroll down, we get uh, specific victim details. So we can see that uh, this uh, child was eight years old. Uh, the injury agent, what was actually causing the injury, the machinery or structure or animal was an ATV or some type of off-road vehicle. And he was the operator in that vehicle. And then you can see that uh, it wasn't a confined space, no grain. Um, it's unknown if the seatbelt or helmet was used. Uh, if there was a seatbelt, um, similar with a ROPS or rollover protection structure, um, that can often not be shared in a news article. It's usually not of, there. it's not very important in the news article. The reporters often are more concerned about the injury itself. But it's very insightful for us to know how many people were, say, wearing their seatbelt in a, an auto incident 
or during a tractor rollover, how many had a ROPS installed. So you can keep scrolling down, you can get some more information on the 12 year old in the incident. Uh, and then at the very bottom is the related resources. So this is the really useful thing uh, that you can share around a lot. We have links to a lot of our prevention resources. So for example, this is the prevention brief for ATV riding is not child's play. So if you click on that, it'll take you to our Cultivate Safety website, which hosts all of these uh, pamphlets and information. And this is a great thing to bring to a town hall to pass out so that your community can feel like they have something that they can act on when they are thinking about what they can do to address these issues. And so if you go back to Ag Injury News, uh, we can click on this arrow up here to get back. And let's say that a lot of our injuries were tractor related. Let's say there were a lot of youth tractor incidents that uh, maybe they were too young to be operating it or they were too inexperienced or the conditions were too unsafe for operation. So if we scroll down to injury agents and click on that, we get this long list of injury agents. So you can see how many uh, injuries were related to what injury agents. So last year in youth, we had 22 ATV or off-road vehicle injuries. Uh, scrolling down a bit more, we had 12 machinery incidents, and then we had 42 tractor incidents. So it's not an isolated issue. But then if we click on tractor, we can see that it specifies it even more. And a lot of these injuries are due to rollovers or being run over or unspecified where there's just not quite enough information to really figure out what the exact injury cause was. So we can scroll back up and click on filter and the webpage will update to see where all of these incidents are. And you can see that it's mainly in the Midwest, which is where a lot of the agriculture occurs in the US. Uh, but we can scroll down to get a little bit more information. And let's say that the town knows the numbers, they know how many people are getting injured, but they're still not moving to action. One of the most powerful things about news reports is they are often very emotional. A family will have the opportunity to tell their story so that other people can prevent these injuries in the future. So scrolling down, you can often tell by the summary what the tone of the article is, especially uh, when you combine it with the title. And if you read through some of these, an excellent example of this is this incident from Toulon, Illinois, where a farm accident ends the short life of the cool kid from Illinois. So if you click on this article, you can see that a 13 year old male was fatally injured when he was helping guide a reversing tractor, which was operated by his grandfather with a cultivator attachment and one of the metal shanks ended up piercing his head. So I advise after this demonstration, you read through the article. It's a really powerful article. It's really important to know that these things are still happening and that we can prevent them. We have the ability to prevent them, but we also need to keep in mind that we need to know information about this in order to prevent them. We need to inform our prevention materials. And so as you scroll down to the prevention briefs that we have down here, we have three different ones listed, such as the prevention brief for don't send a child, where it's basically saying don't send a child to do an adult, an adult's job. Or a child's perception may not be a reality that Parents need to know when their child is ready to safely drive a tractor or just to be around the operation of a tractor. And so you can click on all of these links to get these great handouts, which will be fantastic to bring with you to a town hall meeting or share on a Facebook group or some other email list that you might have. And so as you go through Ag Injury News, you can search just using the map just to kind of zoom in to see where you're located, see what injuries are happening in your neck of the woods, or you can sort, sort by filters in order to find what injuries are happening based on say certain type of machinery, or maybe a special population, you have a lot of Anabaptist uh, population around you, then you can see you know, what's, what injuries are occurring in the Anabaptist population 
and then you can get some of those prevention materials tailored to those types of injuries. So I hope this was a helpful demonstration and that you can now use this to go through some of the other activities we have listed on our flyer, as well as just click through the website, see what's relevant for you. Uh, if you're really interested in the prevention materials, I highly suggest you check out Marshall, uh, excuse me, Dr. Marcia Salzweedle's presentation on the Ag Youth Work Guidelines, which is a great interactive tool online to help you hone in on specific uh, tasks that youth can do tailored to their skill level and their ability level. And I really hope that you can use this moving forward because unfortunately, this is not an isolated incident. These injuries are still happening and they have been going down lately, which is awesome to see, but they're still pretty prevalent and we can decrease the prevalence of these injuries and keep farmers safer and keep their families safer. And so I'd like to thank you for watching this demonstration. I hope you were able to follow along. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to contact me or anyone else on the team. And I'd like to thank you again, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.